For the uh, fresh pasta, you're going to get your eggs, which is your egg yolks and whole eggs. Crack them into a container. Whisk up. Make sure you thoroughly mix, mix it up. Now you can do your pasta two ways. You can either do it in a bowl and then make a little well and then add that in, or you're gonna you can do it right on your table. So you're gonna lay your pasta out, and I'm gonna add my salt. Make sure you mix it up very good. So we're going to make our well. Again, you can do it in the bowl. And place it in. Then you're going to slowly add in the pasta mixing it in as you go. So you want to keep the well intact so you're going to go from the inside slowly add the flour into it. Eventually once it gets to a point where you can handle it you're going to go ahead and start to use your hands and we're going to go ahead and get that a nice. Now the whole idea is so that it barely sticks to your hand. So you might have to adjust with a little flour or water if it's a little runny. Add a little flour. If it's a little dry, we're going to add a little water to it. And make sure you work that flour with your fingertips. And insulate your hands from time to time with the flour. Try not to create too many lumps. You don't want any of those in your pasta. You may not use all the flour also if it's too dry. You gotta get it to a point where it's going to barely stick. So I got this here. Again, avoid any lumps. So what we're looking for here is so that it barely sticks to your hand. Alright, so we're at a good point here. This is about where you want it. Barely sticking to your hand. We're going to get rid of the rest. The next step is to knead it. So basically you're using the palm of your hand and turning it around. You can go in a 45 degree angle. You want to get it to a point where it starts to um, get a little elastic. So we want to go ahead and get that going. And then once you do that, then you're going to wrap it in plastic and let it sit for at least 20 minutes. Preferably 30, but 20 minutes should do. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get this in plastic into a nice round ball. Now while this is happening you could begin prepping your chicken, bell pepper, and onion mixture. Okay so you're going to use a bell pepper, red onion, half a red onion, half a bell pepper, cut it in half, and you want to take out the seeds. Tap it on a little. You can do any kind of cut you want, a dice, a slice, whichever you want. And uh, if you want to take out the ribs, you can take out the ribs, which is the white area. It's up to you guys. We'll set that aside. Red onion. Half a red onion diced. Leave the core on. Cut off the ends. Cool. 
And then again you have the core there. About almost all the way without going all the way through. And then right on the bottom cut through. Still intact. I'm going to go this way on that. And then finally, we'll set this aside on a tray. You can actually do your chicken on the same board with this. Before I do that though, I'm going to go ahead and get the andouille sausage. This is it. You're going to use one link. I'm going to go ahead and cut it lengthwise and cut it again this way. You can go on a bias if you want, however you want to do it. You can dice it. This is basically a Cajun sausage. We'll set that aside. Okay, for your chicken, I'm going to grab a piece of your chicken here. And you're going to either cut it into strips or you may do it into um, slivers. I like to do it in the slivers, and let me show you what I mean by a sliver. And I'll go do a few strips too, but sliver is basically just kind of cutting it thin, but on an angle. You can cut it on either side, back and forth. Or if you want to just cut it in strips, what I would do is I would cut it in half. And then just cut it this way. So you can get this into a bowl, add it into your bowl, and then I have the uh, Cajun seasoning that I'll have for you guys. You can use this as an option. So again, remember your um, your andouille sausage is basically the same thing. So this will be an option for you. So put a little bit in, not too much. It's kind of salty, and then remember your pasta is going to be cooked in salted water so just be aware of that as well. Okay, you're going to get your pan to a medium high heat, a tablespoon of olive oil, get this in. First thing you're going to add is your chicken. So add that in. Nice, nice sear on this. Let's get that chicken in there. We're going to have a nice good smell to that. You want a nice caramelization on this. So don't disturb it. Let's get some caramelization. So you want to kind of get this set into the middle. Add your andouille. want to get some caramelization on that as well. Okay, we're going to add veggies. All we're doing on the veggies is we're sweating them out. Okay, at this point, you're going to let it rest while you get your pasta. For the Caesar salad, you're going to get a bowl, fill it up with a little water and ice. Okay, not too much ice. You just need enough ice so that the water gets cold. You do want the ice to dissolve. Okay, then you're going to get uh, the romaine. Cut where the ribs are. And with the ice uh, and water we'll do, we'll clean it and then it'll also chill the uh, lettuce at the same time. So you do want to cut where the ribs are and then just cut through it. Pick out any bruised lettuce and then add it into your ice water. And just let it sit for a little bit and let it chill up in there. Very important that you let the ice dissolve. You don't want to put too much ice, otherwise you're going to be fishing them out. Go ahead and drain it. Just 
like that. And then go ahead and put it in to drain. For the Caesar dressing, you want to combine the mayonnaise, lemon juice, Worcestershire, garlic, salt, pepper, Parmesan cheese, and the milk. And then just mix it up. To make your pasta, you're going to need, of course, your pasta dough that's been resting. You're going to have your sheeter, which is your straight pasta roller. And then you're going to have, after you make your pasta into uh, flat noodles, then you're going to go ahead and make it into the fettuccine. This is the fettuccine extruder, and this is just your sheeter to get the sheets of pasta. And you want to start at the highest, which is going to be, and this doesn't have numbers on it, but again, you'll have to take a look. And again, as you go, you're going to close it to the next step. Okay, to put it onto your KitchenAid, your flour. I'll show you how to do that. It turns out the sheeter was broken. This fettuccine should work. So I'm just going to have to do it on a rolling pin, which is another way you can do it. So you'll remove this. So what I'm going to do here is I'll show you two ways actually how to do it on the fettuccine roller. And they, basically what I'm doing is just going to roll it out with a rolling pin. You're going to use your little bench flour, get it worked in. And you're going to cut it into four pieces. Set these aside. You want to cover them. So all we're going to do is just make a little sheet. So I'll roll these out just like that. About an eighth inch. So basically what I'm doing here is what the sheeter is going to do. Turn it around. So make sure you work it with the flour. You don't want it to stick, especially when you put it in the extruder. I'm going to show you the first way how to do it without one. So you guys can get an idea. It's nice and thin. Doesn't necessarily have to be straight. And if it tends to stick a little, just work it with flour. And just like that. And again, it, it depends on you how thin you want it and how long you want it. So this is about what we're looking for roughly about an eighth inch you should be able to see through it not too thin you don't really want to go too thin but at least you can see through it now here's the other way you're going to do it if you choose to do it just manually what you're going to do is you're going to roll it up make sure you have flour so that it doesn't stick roll it up gently don't roll it up tight just gently roll it up As you can see I'm doing here. Now remember don't do it tight. Do it really loose because what you're going to do is you're going to use your knife and you're going to cut them into fettuccine strips. So just like this. And you have these fettuccine just like this. The rest I will show you how to do it on the machine. But you want to make sure you keep them dry, make sure they don't stick. And then unlike the fettuccine you're going to you buy at the store that's dried, it takes anywhere from, you know, 12 14 minutes. This is only going to take roughly 2 because it's fresh, 2 to 3 minutes in boiling water. So we'll add these on to our sheet pan lined with parchment paper. I'll show you. Usually you would use some semolina. Just get a little line and just place them on just like so. Make sure they are loose. You've got one there. 
as you can see. We'll do the rest. I'll reel these all out and then I'll get the machine back on. So we want to get these prepped. And once I get these prepped, we'll begin to extrude with the fettuccine roller. So this is all ready. We're going to get okay, our machine. Okay, so you're going to do the same thing as you did with that. You're going to go ahead and I'll just show you real quick. This goes in. Make sure it aligns in. It goes in. Put the screw in. And then you do want to work a little flour with it. So I've got this here. You got to be very careful when you're doing it. Do it slowly. You don't want it to curl up on you. So do it nice and slow, basically on one or stir, and then gently add it in while holding it. And then you're going to get the other side. Just like that. Okay. And then just work some flour in there on both sides. And again, have someone help you. I'm going to cut off this end here. So another thing you can do is just start off by cutting off an end. And then add that in. Do it slowly. Pasta there. You have your pasta. Again, make sure it doesn't stick. Add flour if you need to. You don't want it to stick. It's going to mess up on you. Okay, make sure you get your water to a rolling bowl. You're going to add your salt. Again, about two quarts of water to two teaspoons of salt. Now you're going to add this all in at once, gently setting it down. And we're going roughly about right, two once minutes. It's done, in my case, you'll have another pan. In your case, you have another pan. We're going to go ahead and switch, get this on, and then add your pasta right into it using either your tongs. And again, this little excess water is going to be a good thing. There you go, add this all in. And then we're going to add the cream. And then you can adjust with salt, pepper, or with Cajun seasoning. Bring that all up, add your cream. Let that reduce. So you can see it's very watered down. As that cream cooks, it will reduce. 